this is my ride. It is a badass 4x4 weekend lifestyler van. Um, and I've had it for two and a half, three years now. I get a ton of questions. And yeah, I figured it's a crappy day. Let's do a tour. And um, I hope you enjoy. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Uh, go ahead and subscribe or look right here. I'm going to do a comparison to the truck I used to drive. And um, yeah, just talk about shuttle rig. So, before I had this van, I spent the 50 out of 52 weekends a year for like 7 years on the road in a Toyota Tacoma. And that was a great car. It was 4 cylinders, got pretty good gas mileage, about the same as the Subaru I had before. But it had some major discomfort issues and it was kind of like a medium duty rig for my heavy duty lifestyle of always being on the road on the weekends. So, I had a couple things on my wish list. A furnace that would keep me warm at night when it got brutally cold, a much more comfortable bed than an air mattress, a refrigerator so I would have stuff cold and be able to cook real food, and a uh, just more comfortable living space where I could keep a lot more gear uh, without everything being a clutter. So first things first is my refrigerator. This is a 54 quart Dometic and it has more than enough capacity for a weekend trip, a week long trip. I lived out of the van for a month and it did great. Runs off an extra battery underneath the vehicle and I never have to worry about starting or anything like that. So in the back here, I've got my electrical panel. This is my house system and it functions everything that's not related to the car. So I can check my voltage to see how far down I've drawn on my refrigerator. I've got two house light switches. The back one does house lights for when I'm in here at night. And then the front one is just a small night light right there. This controller is for my furnace and it lets me use it as a fan to just blast heat or to actually dial in the thermostat and run it on low all night. Which basically because I built this triple insulated uh, and I keep two sleeping bags and a fleece blanket. I never actually use, uh, but it's certainly nice to have if it's a rainy day and it's cold and we want to sit in here living room style, which brings me to the front seat. So the front passenger seat rotates. I can it usually lives facing forward when we're driving and where it locks in place. And then when it's a kind of a nasty day and I want somewhere just to sit and have a living room feel, spin that around and I'll be comfortable in here for hours bed in here is slightly smaller than a queen. It's a uh, four inch fem memory foam with uh, a stiffer foam underneath. It's definitely stiff, but I built it that way because it actually helps me recover better overnight to be on a firmer bed. And uh, usually whatever back aches I've got are gone in the morning. It's super warm because it's memory foam as opposed to another material. And uh, yeah, it's, it's long enough for me to sleep in here end to end and have plenty of headroom above, which were the two requirements I had coming out of the truck. Gear storage. There is a ton of gear that lives with me during my season. Uh, I've got about six paddles here. I keep anywhere from two creek boats and a playboat to, at festivals, as many as a dozen boats. If I'm running a short shuttle, I've moved as many as 18 creekers at a time on my racks. Uh, underneath me in the bed always lives a raft couch uh, built from by air, a uh, cooking setup for the fire, a pop-up tent, hatchet, blowtorch to start fires in the rain, other miscellaneous tools, and then random stuff which I don't use a ton like my full face helmet, breakdown paddle, pogies, stuff like that. So one of the things no one ever tells you about with uh, these vans and putting stuff under a bed is that when you hit the brakes, everything's going flying. When you bounce around off-road, everything's flying. So I pretty quickly figured out how to use tarp grommets and bulk webbing to make these security nets. So one of the things I do during the year is I run four different festivals, a race series, all that stuff. And having this little box for my miscellaneous is awesome. 
I strongly recommend if you're not gonna build out cabinets or something like that, get one of these. As soon as I got my fridge, obviously anytime someone needed a drink, they just let themselves into my van and started grabbing them, which is fine. I love my friends, but suddenly all the empties started coming back too. Uh, at this point, I decided I needed more storage to deal with everything, and I started hollowing out the doors and using them for the very specific purposes that I needed. So this door, all it is, is empty can storage. Usually holds about 50 cans. I just empty it out at the end of every trip. This door is exclusively for my NRS straps. I have straps on hand to carry 16 boats at any time. And miscellaneous yaya -ya that I can never find goes into this pocket. Back door of the van, all my miscellaneous stuff. So there's a hatchet, blowtorch, all the things that I, when I need them in a hurry, I want to just know exactly where they are and grab them. And then this is usually where all the stuff I have for just toiletries goes. My toothbrush, toothpaste, contact stuff, olives right here because I can just reach it when I'm in bed and it's the first thing I touch in the morning and the last thing I touch at night. Once again, under the bed, more security straps, that's my couch, everything else I need. So camping stuff basically all comes out the back door. There are a seemingly obnoxious number of electrical circuits in this van. Uh, I've got the roof light bar, I've got underglow, I have got the interior stuff, I've got all sorts of things going on, uh, custom signal tow mirrors with the auto adjust. Uh, a lot of people ask me why I did all that stuff. There's a really good reason for every single one. If you have a comment, just ask. This video is getting long enough. Um, but generally all that stuff just, it's gotten cheaper and cheaper over the years. So suddenly instead of something that used to cost like 200 bucks, it costs like 20 bucks plus you know wire and a switch. So what the hell, I got time. Up here on the roof, the ladder on the side get, makes getting here super easy. Um, but once you're up here, you realize you're nine feet up in the air. Uh, so one of the things I did to this van is the entire outside is covered in spray-on truck bed liner, which most people know is like Line-X or rhino line or something like that. Uh, and what it does is it makes getting these boats on and off a little bit easier because I don't have to worry quite as much about scratching everything. One of my favorite toys in the summer is the swing out awning I have here from Fox Swing. I'll drop a photo right there. And uh, that just makes being out here in the shade super easy and it's just way easier than pulling a pop-up out and deadlifting it around. It just swings out, life's good. Speaking of that nine feet, one thing that a lot of people ask me about is like, oh yeah, why didn't you get a sprinter though or a high top? I'm already nine feet up. That means that I don't fit into parking garages, McDonald's drive throughs or anything like that when I've got boats stacked on their sides. I wouldn't even fit in there right side up between the lift, the 33 inch tires and boats or just the roof rack uh, if I had a high top. And now I've got to deadlift boats 11 feet in the air. No thanks. Finally, before I hop down, uh, a lot of people have seen this van, fallen in love with it, gotten their own and either they bought it with an AC unit and fans and all sorts of nonsense up top, or they installed it. And then what happened is all of this open space that's beautiful and you can just cram boats into disappears. Suddenly, instead of me being able to move whatever, you know, upwards to 20 boats on this van, I would maybe be able to move like six if I had fans and all sorts of miscellaneous junk in the way. This rack is only half an inch above the roof. There's just no room for competing spaces. So how do I stay cool if I don't have a fan or an AC or anything like that? Easy. The beautiful thing about these Ford fans is millions of them were made in many different trim settings. So there, if you go to a junkyard, are usually a lot of options for a part. You know, if I break a windshield wiper on Christmas Day, true story, on the way home, I can go to any junkyard, pull the part I need for $2, and I'm back on the road. By the same token, if I want an upgrade piece or a piece of trim that only came on a passenger version or something like that, I can go grab it super cheap. So for like 100 bucks around the way, maybe 150 I went into junkyards and pulled out pop-out windows. So there are four, one on each cargo door. And then I have built screens 
that drop in. No bugs get in. I stay cool with a nice little cross breeze all summer. The one thing I, I forgot to cover so far has been the 4x4. Uh, there is no way I would own one of these that is not 4x4. I live in the Northeast in one of the snowiest, harshest places to be a commuter, to deal with winters. Uh, and then I spend all of my time off road in random places, and getting stuck is not an option. So, this vehicle has an insane amount of horsepower for what I do. It's insanely overbuilt for what I do. Um, but I love it, and I would never have a two wheel drive van. Uh, this conversion was done when the van was brand new uh, for a telecommunications company that needed something that could reach like poles in the middle of nowhere. So, it started life as a cargo van. Went to a company called Quigley, which is located in Pennsylvania. And what they do is they create these kits that are a hodgepodge of uh, OEM parts from different vehicles and brackets that they make. So that converts it into 4x4. I have a sheet of paper which has every single part that they threw in here. And if I do break down, I give that to my mechanic and I go, hey, the Ford standard part isn't going to work. But if you read down here, this is the part that drops in, and it's a totally beautiful system. There are other systems that are DIY, um, stuff like that, but if you are interested in that, I strongly suggest going on Expedition Portal or another site like that. I am going to drop the link to my Expedition Portal build, uh, so if you want to see this get built out, that's the place to go. Read it through. And uh, you'll see this start from an orange, rusted out cargo van uh, into this. Well, the van has been incredible. Um, I get a lot of comments about it in public and, and uh, everywhere we go. We've started calling it my milkshake because it brings all the boys to the yard. People stop me everywhere wanting to know about stuff. Uh, the flip side, um, the worst part about the van is having people tell me what I should do with my vehicle. Or tell me how much they like the van and then make some snarky remark about gas mileage to justify to themselves why they don't have one of these things. Um, obviously, if I've built this thing all the way out with all of this heavy gear, 33-inch mud tires, all of that jazz, at no point was I shocked to see my gas bill increase. Um, I don't really track it because it's not a priority to me, but generally speaking, I only get about 20% worse gas mileage than my four-cylinder Tacoma. Whatever, man, it's gas mileage. Um, but yeah, thanks a lot for watching this. If you have questions, please feel free to ask. Um, and uh, yeah, at some point in the future, I'll be dropping something about my old rig, uh, which Will now has, and I'll talk about the Tacoma and why that was great too. Thanks. By the way, if you want to know how to make really good dirtbag vehicle screens that will last you a lifetime, go to that ex Expedition Portal link in the description.